Hey, good afternoon. Well, I should say good evening. If you, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michael Lipinski. I'm going to be your, your instructor during the duration of this course. Now, where we, uh, where we were, we're going to pick right back up. Um, and this is a certification objective. We were discussing uh, real-world scenarios, working with area plans on large projects, creating schedules and legends and um, quantities and graphical column schedules, material takeoff sheet lists, note blocks, view lists and the such, schedule keys. We created a room schedule, which was a certification objective. And uh, I suggest you go back and uh, practice, 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 practice. You're going to be required to perform an assessment. They're going to perform an assessment of your skill sets to see if you can indeed perform the function. So in, in addition to your educational and your, your working experience during the course of your life, you're going to have to sit down at a workstation or online, and you're going to have to demonstrate that you are capable of using the software with whatever exercise they're going to throw at you. So I just want you to be prepared, because that's how you get in the door. And, and once you're in the door, it opens up a whole world for you. Now, find your strengths, focus on them, and you'll be able to do this. You'll be able to do this. This is not an insurmountable task. The AEC industry is a, is a wonderful world to exist in. It's a wonderful career path, and many people choose it. And it transcends the AEC industry, which is what I'm uh, trying to convey to you. Each and every piece of infrastructure that is created is going to require multiple teams, multiple individuals, uh, to participate. So you're going to meet a lot of professionals and you'll meet a lot of other folks along the way. Uh, how uh, you react to that is going to be purely based on your own perspective. So now, again, I hope you have your thinking caps on because we're going to move now over to making a wall section. Uh, I'm sorry, a wall schedule. Okay, so I'm going to read verbatim from the text and uh, follow along. So uh, let me close um, the stairs railing exercise that we worked on, this monorail and railway. And for those of you in the know, you'll uh, appreciate the power of those particular tools. I uh, just wanted to focus on that. There's a, a few things you could do with this platform. Now, let's go back to uh, sample building start. In this exercise, you will create a schedule of building elements that is filtered to report only certain types of walls and is simplified to show only a summary of each unique wall type within the project. Make sure you have the C18 sample building start RVT or its metric equivalent from the book's companion website. From the view tab in the ribbon, locate the create panel. Well, for starters, we have to get out of the drafting view, right? We have to get out of the drafting view. From the view tab in the, uh, view, in the view ribbon, we'll go to uh, the create tab, the create panel, I should say, and click schedules. Then click schedule quantities. The new schedule dialog box appear, opens. Choose walls from the category list. If I can find it. And I don't see it right off the bat. From the categories list, I don't see it right off the bat. That's because the architectural tab isn't checked, the architectural checkbox. All right, so we have walls. Now, if you look, that includes wall sweeps, right? If there's a soldier course, right? If you had a soldier course, we may want to include that. So let's uh, uh, click walls from the category list and cl click OK. And we uh, bring up our uh, select schedule properties where we have all of our available fields. In the fields tab, choose the following wall properties from the available fields list and add them to the scheduled field list in, uh, in this order. Function, family, Type,
and area. Switch to the sorting grouping tab. Set the first sort by field to family. And click the header and blank line options. Leave the itemize every instance option checked for now. Leave that checked. Click OK to close the dialog box and observe the amount of data that is available for the schedule. Let's refine this schedule even further. Excuse me. In the Properties palette, scroll down to find the edit buttons related to the five tabs in the schedule, in the Schedule Properties dialog box. Click the button next to Filter. Set the first filter drop-down list to Function equals Exterior. If you can see, the Properties uh, palette uh, for this schedule um, has the uh, Fields filter, Sorted Grouping, Formatting, and Appearance and a phase filter phase and we can apply a view template to this just like we could for the views. So go to filter and uh, set the first filter drop down list to function equals exterior. Function equals exterior. Switch to the formatting tab and select the function field which is selected already. Check the hidden field option and click OK to view the results in your schedule. It will look like this and it doesn't. So hold that thought. Give me a second here. Their um, schedule shows type as well. And it's a mistake in the book. Okay, so that's uh, what it should look like. And if I select this column, you'll be able to see it a little better. Okay, so yeah, that's what it is in the text. Now that now that now only the exterior walls are being listed, walls with any other function property are not being itemized. Although the function field is not shown, it must be included in the schedule fields list to be used as a filter. From the Properties palette, click the Edit button related to the Sorting Grouping tab. <clears throat> Uncheck the Itemize Every Instance option. And check the Grand Total options from the Grand Total drop-down list. Choose Totals Only. Totals Only. Switch to the Formatting tab and select a family field from the list. Check the hidden field option. Next, select the area field. Check the calculate totals option and set the alignment to right. Click OK, click OK to close the dialog box and observe the final modification to your wall schedule. The finished exterior wall schedule displays a summary of the of elements. In this simple wall schedule exercise, 
you saw that a large amount of model data can be succinctly itemized and displayed using a combination of parameters within the elements. Only the exterior wall types were itemized, and the total area for each type was reported, including a grand total of all types. Making an area schedule. In our next exercise, you will create an area schedule specifically for the usable area scheme you established earlier in this chapter. Uh, being that I closed this, we may have to do it again. But I could, um, I could use the finished product to show you this. Um, if, in, anyway, in any event, I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll, um, I'll uh, shoot from the hip with this one. From the view tab in the ribbon, select schedules and then schedule quantities. From the categories list, select the area, usable area. Okay, so we didn't create it yet, you see? It's not created. So, again, I'll, um, we'll test my memory retention, right? We can test my memory retention. Architecture. Level 1 floor plan. Architecture. Area. Area plan. Level 1. Level 2. Usable area. Gross building, usable area. Do not duplicate views. Wait, there's a step we're supposed to do before this, right? There was one other step. Before you can do this, we have to... Area and volume computations, if you remember, right? Area schemes. We didn't give it a scheme. We need to create a usable area scheme. Usable area. I don't have Alzheimer's just yet. And if you don't use it, you will lose it. So I suggest you make a pot of coffee. You, gotta, you make a pot of coffee. Use it or lose it. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Area plan. Rentable. Usable. Gross building. Level 1, level 2. Okay. Automatically create area boundary lines associated with external walls? Yes. When you see this twice, right? You remember from the last exercise? Twice. Okay, now, we talked about these boundary lines on how, depending on the function of the space uh, per BOMA, Building Owners and uh, Managers Association, distances and uh, extents of these measurements will measure it from different uh, distances, from the core, from the finished face, from the exterior. All these variables will play into uh, this boundary line and how it calculates the space in the United States, right? In uh, other parts of the world, it may be different. So let's just stick domestically for now. Okay, so as you can see, we do have the area plans usable area open, and uh, we do have that. But what we don't have is we don't have any um, any tags or areas um, on this floor, right? We don't have any rooms or areas, so um, we should tag we should tag um, we should tag the areas, right? but there's no rooms. So let me see if I can get through this without actually having to do that. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll get lucky. Okay. Um, okay, now, making an area schedule. Let's see if this works without, without that. In our next exercise, we will create an area schedule specifically for the usable area scheme you established earlier in this chapter. The process is similar to that of creating a wall schedule. If you're working through all the exercises in this chapter, which we are, and we work through pretty much every one of them in the book, and we're almost, we're about an inch to the end. It used to be about four inches, right? So we're uh, maybe four and a half. So we're getting there. And then when we get into MEP, it's going to get real wicked. It's going to get real wicked for you gearheads. If you're working through all the exercises in this chapter, continue with the sample building RVT of the metric equivalent from the book's Companion website. From the view tab in the ribbon, select schedules and then schedule quantities from the categories list.
Now we have usable area as a category, right? All right. So select the area, area usable area and schedule type and click OK. On the fields tab, notice that the available fields in an area table are much more limited than they were in the walls table in the previous exercise. For this schedule, you need only four fields. Area type, level, name, and area. Area type, level, name, and area. Choose those fields. Choose those from the fields list on the left and using the add button, move them to the right or double click the names to move them from one side to another. Well, you can do that if you want to double click, it'll go there. Perimeter. Let's, let's put that in there for a second. I want, the, I want the perimeter in there, just because I want to see it myself. I'm going to throw it in there for ha-has. Remember that the order of the fields in the list will determine the order of the columns in your final schedule. So uh, cell A1 will be area type, cell A2, uh, B1 will be level, and, um, and the subsequent will follow. Now, um, use the move up and move down buttons as needed to order the list correctly. So if I want a perimeter on the top, I can move perimeter up, I can move perimeter down. Now again, anyone who's used Microsoft Access or any database program or any Windows-based uh, program that allows you to uh, utilize fields will understand how this, uh, this particular uh, uh, dialog box works. And we could spend a couple of years on that, right, on databases alone. Databases are very, very powerful tools. Um, but th these are the fundamentals that I'm trying to instill. So this will get you in the door. This will definitely get you in the door. Now, you don't need a master's degree in architecture. You don't need a master's degree or a doctorate in engineering to work in an engineering and architectural firm. I'm letting you know that. They're constantly looking for folks that have exposure to the industry, that your experience is going to play a big part of this. So if you can get this under your belt, and it's true, if you aspire to get into this line of work, it's something that uh, will help you get there. Or you can ignore it and um, follow the advice a different route. This course isn't for everyone. And it all depends on where you get, you get in. You know, it all depends on how you get in. All right, now, next, choose the sorting grouping tab from the first pull-down menu. Choose to sort by area type and check the header and footer boxes with tools only option. Sort by area type and check the header and footer boxes with the totals only. Grand totals, totals only. As you can see, there's a lot more that you do with this. You can add a lot more. We're going through just the, the basics, and then you can customize this and, and to get it to look exactly what you know, like the way you want and to extract whatever data you want out of this. And again, I'm going to sprinkle this in because, again, AutoCAD are lines, arcs, shapes. And AutoCAD architecture expands on that to a certain extent. And being that AutoCAD MEPs built on top of the AutoCAD architecture, it expands on that a little bit more. Now this expands on that even more. And it takes all the lessons learned from those previous platforms, applications in the field and in the industry, and it created a better platform to, to address the, uh, the, the shortcomings of the prior platforms. That's why Autodesk acquired the company in the first place. Now, that being said, this uh, program, it's open-ended, an open-ended, open architecture program. It's programmable. The source code is programmable. You can change the source code. And if Autodesk approves your source code, it becomes part of the software package. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a real-world experience after I finish this, this particular passage. Now, 
Sort by area type and check the header and footer boxes with tools only option, with totals only option. In the second pull down, choose to sort by level. Check the itemize every instance option at the, um, at the bottom. Itemize every instance is checked. In the schedule, you want to make the areas read as they would in a spreadsheet. Write justified and totaled. Choose the formatting tab and select area from the list on the left. I don't remember putting in those area types, by the way. Just so you know, that field might be blank, right? Area type was a uh, service, support, office, and then it was vertical circulation for the stairwells, if you recall. It may not ret return any uh, data, but what we'll do is we'll take a look at the finished product and you'll see it because it gives you two versions of this particular project, the sample building start and then the sample building finished with the exercise completed so you can compare and contrast. So for time constraint purposes, we'll do that instead of going back to the previous exercises and uh, completing it. And it's only because the battery died on the PC. Uh, in any event, so uh, yeah, you want to make the areas read as they would, as they would in a spreadsheet, right, justified and totaled. So go to the formatting tab and select the area from the list on the left, change the alignment to right, <clears throat> and check the calculate totals pull down calculate totals box select the area type field and select the hidden field box select the area type field and select the hidden field box now as you can see these these settings or parameters if you will these calibrations if you will these uh these problems apply to each one of these fields. So just make a note of that. It's not universally going to be applied to each of these fields when you start selecting and deselecting some of these boxes and changing the properties within these pull-down menus or these pull-down uh, uh, selection boxes. Click OK to close the dialog box. Ah, see? We got nothing. And observe your results. The areas placed on each level should be listed under a header and the total area should be calculated at the bottom of each group level. Finally, the sum of all the areas is displayed as a grand total at the bottom of the schedule. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. It should be on the schedules. Area schedule usable area. Let it upgrade. All right, so what we'll do is um, we'll close the uh, sample building start and we'll pick it up on the uh, sample building finished. How's that sound? Save ourselves a little time. I won't save changes to it. I usually don't for these uh, tutorials. All right, so that's the uh, the drafting view. Let's take a look at the uh, schedules we have here. And as you can see, area schedule usable area is indeed complete for us. So just a little trouble. So that exercise completes with this particular dialogue, with this particular schedule. So um, it it uh, it included the uh, area type, it included the level, it included the uh, area name or area, which was that field, and um, you can see it returned its square footage, its totals. real-world scenario, adding schedules to your templates. As you continue to document your design, you will likely use the same schedules on many projects. Spend the time to make them consistent with your office graphic standards and add them to your office template. That way, you won't have to create them from scratch each and every time as you add content to your model. The schedules will automatically populate in effect filling themselves out. If you have a schedule in another project and you want to add it to your current project, there's no need to recreate it. Both, open both projects in the same instance of Revit. Go to the sheet on which the schedule you want to copy appears. If it's not on a sheet, you'll need to place it on one. Then, simply select it and copy it to the clipboard. In your destination project, go to any sheet and press Control-V to paste it. Once the, the paste is finished, the schedule should be there with all the formatting from the previous project, but with all the information from your current model. When you pull it over, it'll extract it when it, when it gets in. And you can change it, you can transfer it over with project standards, I believe, as well. Another way to um, save a schedule separate from a project file is to save the view. 
choose the application button and click Save as Library, Save Views. From here, you can select several schedules to export as a small, separate RVT file. This file can then be inserted into other project files to add uh, the schedules. If you want to export only one schedule, you can right-click the schedule in the project browser and select Save to New File from the context menu. So in order of sequence, what it's saying is we could go out here, we could save it out as a library and views, and you'll see there is the schedule area, schedule usable area. We hit that, it's gonna, it's gonna ask us where to save it to. Right, we'll get a uh, dialog box. Where do you wanna save it? And you can keep all your schedules in a library. Right, if you uh, just so happen to have one, you can create a, a library, I'm sorry, you can create a subdirectory in, in the library uh, directory tree under the US Imperial or metric or generic, and um, you can keep those schedules there. And again, door and window schedules. Uh, uh, water, uh, water source heat pump schedules, transformer schedules, uh, variable air volume control register schedules, all those schedules for all the components that go in. Uh, I'm trying to think of some more. Uh, automatic transfer switches, um, light fixtures, all that, right? All those things. So, um, where does that leave us? Well, that leaves us uh, right to creating a sheet list, which is kind of cool. So um, I'm going to read through it, and um, I'll go through all the exercises, um, and we'll see that it's already completed here. But, again, I could still... Uh, actually, you know what? There's absolutely no reason why I can't go back and just do it from the start uh, project. And just go through the steps, sample building start, because this doesn't require us, I don't believe, to use anything existing. Um, well, a little bit. Well, not, this isn't really what... Uh, we're not going to need any of the other things, I don't think any of the area schedules to perform this exercise. Okay, so we're in the drafting view of this. Oh, I'm sorry, before I do that, yeah, so the other one was that you can go to the schedule itself and you can right mouse click on it and save it out as. You can do it right here. Um, you can right mouse click within the context of selecting it. The schedule's not created right now, but you get my drift, it'll be here, and then you right mouse click on it and then you can save that out right there and then just as an individual schedule. And it'll go into the same library structure that um, your building uh, information modeling manager may have set up for you on maybe a network drive or Dropbox or some web portal. Maybe you, uh, you have a, uh, you're using Procore or, or something like that. Maybe, uh, maybe BIM 360 Docs. So you, you know, if you're in the industry, you know there's lots of places you can store this in a, so the team can see it. Uh, uh, sort on your, your company server, uh, on a USB drive. If you're one of those folks that travel from shop to shop and you take your uh, you take some of your stuff with you, you don't feel comfortable having it up on the web, well, you're, you're more than welcome to put on a flash drive. Now, creating a sheet list. Now, everyone who've, uh, who's worked in the industry, I believe, has seen uh, construction document sets. Um, and they go by discipline, and usually within the first couple of sheets, the cover sheet, maybe the general notes sheet or uh, title sheet, you'll see uh, a sheet list of the drawings you're going to expect to see that you're going to have to reference. And how many times do you go A101, A102, A103, A104, and the same thing, uh, E101, E102, E103, and usually is indicative of the floor that it's on based on AIA standards and BOMA standards and all that stuff. So, and the plumbing will follow that way, and the mechanical will follow that way, and the telecommunications will follow that way. And in some cases, the civil will also have their sheet sets within the um, the, sh the, uh, the construction document set. Now, I have a bunch, and I, I probably should have opened up uh, an entire architectural set so that you could see it, but I think you get my drift. It's broken up by division, right? By division. All right, now, creating a sheet list. Using a sheet list schedule, you can create a tabular view of sheets in your project, even including drawings provided by consultants. This type of schedule allows you to create placeholders for sheets that are not created. Excuse me. Or that will not be part of your discipline's drawing set. Now, discipline, I know, you worked all day. You worked all day, and either your company told you to get to this class because it's free, or um, you came on your own. So you had a long day, and, and you're going to be here until 10 o'clock after waking up at uh, 5, maybe, uh, 6, 7, and getting to work and working hard all day. 
and you, they, they hired you to be a draftsman or an engineer or an architect or an architectural draftsman, whatever role. And uh, they're keeping you on staff, but they think that you probably should go get some training as well. Uh, and maybe you do too. So it's going to be difficult. The old, the old, the old you get, the more difficult it's going to become. So I only bring that up because I just don't want to see you rest on your laurels. And you have an opportunity here. We're homebound. And then the government, Uncle Sam has given you a handout. Uncle Sam has given you a handout. What are you going to do with it? But just with, with Uncle Sam's gift to you. Like you sit on your ass in a bar stool or sit in front of the Xbox and, and, and play with yourself. Okay? Uncle Sam, this is an opportunity for you. This is a huge, huge opportunity for you. All of you, inclusive of myself. I, you know, I, I can't remember the last time I had a break from the vortex tempest over there across the Hudson. Okay? I always, always hung on because it says, you know what? Once I get a chance to retire, I'll be able to gather my notes together and, and then go right back into it. I just, I've been running with pieces of paper flying out of my pockets. So we got an opportunity here. Let's seize, let's seize the moment. Carpe diem, right? Carpe diem. So, uh, yeah. Creating a sheet set. Even from uh, the consultants, and, and I've seen it, where um, you'll, let's say, for example, you, uh, you get your contract drawings, and you'll be receiving, you know, maybe the fire alarm vendor drawings, or the BMS drawings, or you'll be receiving the uh, security drawings from the security vendor, or, uh, or any host of other drawings, the landscaping architect, uh, the civil engineer, and if they're either in this format or not, even if they're in AutoCAD format, there's no, absolutely no reason why they can't go on a sheet. They can actually go on a sheet even if they're in AutoCAD. Now, if you've used Project Navigator, it isn't the other way around. You can't take the consultant sheets if they're in an RVT and bring it in. I mean, you can sit around and play with, uh, at, what, what, let me stop. Also, MicroStation, right? We talked about this a little bit, right? Insert, right? We talked about this. Revit, industry foundation classes. CAD, um, we got so many, um, so many different uh, things that we could uh, we could bring in, right? Um, and you know, again, it's the interoperability of the platforms that's going to allow you to do that. It's written so that it can uh, communicate. Uh, it, it speaks multiple languages, and look, think of it as machine language, right? Think of it as um, this machine speaking to this machine, and it understands what it's saying. It's like going into another country and knowing what the dialogue is, what the dialect is. It's the same concept. Anyway, that's a silly uh, representation of that, but it's true. Okay, so let's, let's go through this. In, in, in the sample workflow, you've created area plans for the usable area scheme. Eventually, you may want to create another area scheme based on departmental space spaces. You haven't created them yet, but you want to create your sheet list, including the area plans that you will create later. To do this, I'll follow these steps. It looks like I'm going to have to open up the finished one. I apologize. That's not a problem. Let's bang it right now. Sample building finished. And uh, again, I don't say these. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And if you, if you find that you're working through the exercises and you overwrite one of them and make a mistake and they're all screwed up, there's nothing saying you can't go back to the website and re-download them and overwrite them, right? And get a nice, fresh, clean set. I've done it a million times. In the MEP side, I've done that. Get a nice, clean, fresh set of, uh, of sample files. And these sample files are, are foundation files that you could build on, and they can become your office standards. These office, your office standards. And um, I'm going to say it again. I've been in a lot of shops. This is an opportunity for you. They're not all on board with this. They're not all on board. <laughs> They're not. The bigger, bigger ones, the savvy ones, the governmental agencies are, like the Army Corps of Engineers, right? The Army Corps of Engineers employs this. When I was working at West Point for Verigent, um, it became apparent to me that a lot of this software starts at the top and it 
flows down into the private sector. But another little caveat about uh, your instructor, I also had the opportunity and the honor of working at West Point Military Academy um, in a telecommunications capacity. So uh, I'm not speaking from a perspective that's based on any third-party conjecture. Uh, I've been in the field. I've been in the field. I've walked in the steps of some folks, and I've uh, been through the boot camp over at the joint board. So I don't know how many more battles I've got to fight, but as you can see, uh, it didn't come without a certain bit of wear and tear. So uh, I may be a bit of an eyesore, but uh, try to see through that. Beauty is only skin deep. Right, isn't that, isn't that the old adage? So let's just pause because we're almost, we're almost to the end. Take a little bit of a, take a little bit of e-cig break. We don't have time for a cigarette break. We don't have time. We don't have time. Okay. From the view tab. Click schedules. Sheet list. Ah, now, anyone who's used AutoCAD, and I went, I've done this extensively in AutoCAD. I, for some reason, I was a title block freak. <laughs> Surely because I, I had worked for the MTA as well, you know, City Transit Authority, and they'll give you a set of drawings, and they, and half of these contractors, they don't know what the hell to do with them. You know, and they'll have you, they'll have you spinning your wheels doing all sorts of ridiculous, ridiculous exercises. Yeah. Ridiculous. Now, this is very important, and this is where the, the power of the database comes in here. You know, there's absolutely no reason you should be going over 500 drawings, changing a drawing number, or, or changing uh, the author, or the checked by, or the date. Because there are folks out there that will check your drawings, and they don't know really anything other than what they see in the title block. And you'll have some mid-level manager maybe look over your drawings and all they'll see is that you made a mistake in the data entry because you forgot that you put the wrong date on one of the drawings and then they'll say plot it again and then you'll walk away with your wanting to go nuts because you know this is you know what I mean man you know what I mean it's uh, some of them are real uh, particular and listen there's a right way and there's a wrong way and architecture is a, is, a, is a science and an art, and it's a precise art. It's a precise art. And the, the, as much as it, it, it drives you a little bit of error, you know, when you, when, now that I look back, in retrospect, I, I'm actually glad uh, that I went through some of the trials and tribulations that I went through um, in my career uh, and, and, and did indeed have to be frustrated because it, it made me appreciate the fact that I should expect much, much more from myself. And you'll find that when you do start to become more and more and more confident in your designs, you won't be questioned as much. As a matter of fact, they'll come looking for you for help. Like, I'll be honest with you, I'll give you an example. I'm not gonna name names, but years ago it used to be, yeah, here we go, another one. Here comes another engineer. Now probably doesn't know, it, Jack, whatever. And, and then over the course of my career, I, I, I kind of figured what it is that they were need, or what they needed in the field. And once you can figure out how you can help them expedite their work, they're going to appreciate it, and they'll come looking for you to assist them in laying out their work. If indeed you're looking at this from a shop drawing fabrication perspective, from a design perspective, it's a little different. But it's the same type of idea. Uh, if, you, if you bring quality to the table, You'll, you'll be able to reap the benefits from it, right? And that goes in any profession. Um, there's a certain um, premium for it. What I said, good help is hard to find, and it is. It is. It is. And, and again, I hate to go off on a tangent, but I, I just want to let you know that there are folks in the industry right now that are a couple of years away from retirement that are going to ride it out. And they're going to be able to, 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 to hemorrhage that little bit of cash that they have left from the company and ride off into the sunset. And they're just going to never even make an attempt to do this. But in addition to that, 
there are 30-somethings, and there are 40-somethings, and there are some 50-somethings, and even in some cases some 20-somethings that refuse or don't care or will not put in the effort to keep their finger on the pulse of the industry, and they will fall by the wayside. They will. And you, as a, a, a reasonable, logical human being, should know this. It is advantageous to you to know your slackers. If you know your slackers, then you'll see a value in this. Because they'll resist it. They'll resist it. They will. It's letting it. From the view tab. <coughs> sheet list properties dialer box. Add the field's name sheet number and sheet name to the list of scheduled fields. Sheet number and sheet name to the list of scheduled fields. That's not many. On the sorting grouping tab, but as you can see, this is a very powerful. Sorting grouping tab, choose to sort by sheet number. And make sure the itemize every instance box is checked, which it is. Click OK to close the dialog box. Now that's a pretty good example. Now, believe it or not, my big thing with the schedule was I insisted that my cover sheet always included editing time. Editing time. And the reason was, I was setting a benchmark for myself, and in the process of letting everyone else know that I'm, um, I was challenging myself to just see how long, it, how much time it took me on each of these drawings. Now from a CAD manager's perspective, that's a very interesting tool. You could, um, you know, you usually in a, in a workforce you code your labor, depending on some folks. Some some firms don't, but some folks, some companies will code their labor with some serious codes. And I've been in companies where there's a, a spreadsheet that's six pages of, of activities that are coded um, that you could have been doing during the week, and when you put in your timesheet, you have to code your labor. Now. This is where some of this can come in. You can maybe get creative if you're savvy, and you can uh, 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 quantify or, or at least analyze your team's performance. And, and I talked about this earlier on. Um, and I'm gonna, you'll play the first video. Um, Mastering Web discusses all that in the beginning on how to, uh, how to do some of these things, or at least the capability of doing them and how you should approach it. Now, this is a mastering series designed for those who aspire to be pros. So enough with the, the fun and games. And I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to me. If you've been following along, you know, I've been sprinkling in some of my rantings and some of my, uh, some of my travels. But again, you know, we're getting to the end. So um, when due diligence dictates that we, uh, we uh, take, you know, we, we bring down the uh, facade and really show our true colors. Because I didn't get this far playing games. I didn't. I you know, got this far with pure, pure, pure willpower. It took, it took perseverance and sheer willpower. And uh, every, uh, on the path, I was forked to the left and to the right the whole time. Now, in addition to folks not, in, not wanting you to achieve it, there's a part of you that doesn't want you to sometimes, and you've got to overcome that. You gotta overcome that. And I'm sure uh, an athlete will probably feel the same way, expecting more, just striving for more, raising the bar. Your performance, put those blinders on, right? Put those blinders on, you focus on your performance. And then once you turn that mirror inward, those, those, those voices to the left and to the right don't resonate as much. Again, this is a leadership class. Okay, so now we have that. Um, we have that um, area uh, plan. I'm sorry, the uh, sheet list. If you click the column header, you'll see that indeed we have that. So to begin adding sheets to the list, go to the rows panel. 
the rose panel. Click insert data rows. Now notice how it, it, it'll put a number in sequence. And if you've ever seen an architectural set, this sheet intentionally left blank, God forbid, you, in, in other platforms, you make a mistake. You're going to be going back and editing all of those sheet numbers. If you just add a subtract a sheet. And there are firms that are doing this right now as we speak, and their managers are telling them to do it exactly that way, and they don't know any better. They don't know any better. That's why they're doing it that way. Okay, so data rows. This will give you a row with the next sequential number based on the last number you entered. Change the sheet number in the new row to G101. In the new row to G101, where we have a 101. Oh, well, this is the completed version, right? So it is what it is. Um, and click the data rows button again. The next row should be G102. Change the name to G102 and, 102, and um, G101 and G102 to level 1 area plan and level 2 area plan, respectively. So, um... It's actually done for us because we're in the sample building finish uh, project. Uh, okay, so that's uh, basically what it's telling us to do, and that brings us to the next passage under that, that figure. You can continue populating the schedule in this way, adding any sheet names you need or plan to have in the presentation package. These are the placeholders, right? We discussed maybe you'll be getting something from the consultant. Next, you will begin to create a sheet directly from a row in the sheet list. Now, like I said, this bi-directional associativity, right? This bi-directional associativity. So, now, start by selecting the new sheet button from the Modify Schedules Quantities tab on the ribbon. Modify Schedules Quantity tab on the ribbon. Modify Schedules Quantity tab on the ribbon. Uh, I'm lost. New sheet button. Do you see it? Yeah, it's all the way to the right. Uh, there we go. Maybe it was a periphery issue. Okay, now, this will give you a dialog box similar to 18.25. Now, you'll get the same dialog box if you're in view and you go to sheet. You'll get the same dialog box, right? So, just letting you know, um, within the context of being here in the uh, sheet, in the context of being in the schedule, the contextual tab will open and you will have the modified schedule quantities ribbon. I jumped over to the view to create a new sheet, which is also here. So now start by selecting the new sheet button from the Modify Schedule Quantifies tab in the ribbon. This will give you a dialog box similar to 18.25, which is what I have open. Now the only title block loaded in the only title block family loaded here is a 17 by 22 horizontal C size title block. I told you you'll learn to note. Right? I told you, you'll learn to note. You're going to note with a C note on this one. This will be a C note. A C note. Select the type of sheet border you'd like to use from the list at the top. Choose a seaside sheet border for this exercise. And real quick, I don't know if anyone's, anyone's following along. I got this hodgepodge of um, data that I just threw together in a PowerPoint presentation. Very lengthy. Very lengthy. And uh, when I was um, providing the consultation across the country, what I, I wanted to do was gather as much scientific information as I could and get it into a, a presentation that I could turn into a video. So, not necessarily for a professional presentation, but more along the lines of a, a mnemonic. It's a mnemonic exercise. And, if, and again, I'm not going to go into it right now. But if you go through it, you'll see I uh, basically uh, did a brain dump as fast as I could, as much as I could during the interim, the time frame that I had, just to get as much information about uh, the sphere that we live in onto a presentation. So what I, why I bring it up is because I, I threw in there standard annotation scaling parameters as well as standard sheet sizes. And, and, and the sheet sizes are different all over the world. I mean, there's a lot of engineers and architects, and they don't necessarily all live in the United States. You know, they build buildings other places, too, and there's infrastructure all over the world, written in different languages. And this software is written in different languages. You can, it's in, you know, it's, it's written in different languages. So, but the fundamentals hold true. They do. But again, I only bring that up because if you, if you, if you don't know um, your architectural paper sizes, 
It's a place, it's a depository where you can find them or you can Google it. Architectural paper sizes, documentation sizes, annotation scaling parameters. Those two areas could be a good start for you if you're, if you're a newbie and you want to understand a little bit more about sheets, standard annotation scaling parameters and architectural documentation media sizes, right? Take a look, Google it, you'll see. Um, you'll see the different sizes that you can have. It's paper or vellum or transparencies, all sorts of things. Now, again, I'm digressing and I apologize. So that's the type of border sheet you want to use. We're going to use the C-size border. So that's what we got, right? That's what we got. Now, notice all of those fields in here. And this is a title block family, right? Edit family. Title block family. Uh, now, select G101, level 1 area plan from the list placeholder. Well, that's the sheet list, right? Let's just close the, this dialog box. Let's open these two. Let's tile these views. And let's see A. Notice the uh, schedule doesn't do that because it's really not a view, it's a schedule. Now, select G101 from the list of placeholder sheets. Now, as you can see, it's already there, right? It's already done for us. So I'm going through this exercise with a completed version of the exercise. From the list of placeholder sheets and click OK. Select G1 and click OK. Well, if I didn't have it here, it would be it would create it. This will create a sheet from the line item in the schedule using the same name and sheet number. The new sheet will appear under the sheet node in the project browser with the correct number and name. You will begin to add views to the sheet later in the chapter. So let's just go over to G103, which we do already have, and I'll just maybe add a, insert a data row, 104, and I'll, get, I'll click on that and create a new sheet. And I'll create a See here, select placeholder sheets, and I just hit OK, and boom, now G104 was created utilizing the C-size title block. So again, that's pretty much what uh, the exercise is telling us to do. Um, I just want you to notice something from the sample building, um, sample files. Notice how it's saying chapter 17, but we're in chapter 18. It did it twice, and it did it on chapter 13 too. And there is a, a construction rental differential when it comes to construction. They'll call, you know, construction 13, you know, uh, rental 13, construction 12, right? 13 goes away. No one wants to rent an apartment on the 13th floor. So I'll let you know that. It's an unlucky number in skyscrapers. No one really wants to. There is really a 13th floor. You just don't really realize that you're on it. <coughs> Anyone who doesn't know that, I just want to let you know. And that plays havoc, havoc with documentation. Havoc. Anyone who's ever been up on a hoist would know that. Right? Anyway, that, you'll, you'll see that. Go to, go to Hudson Yards, go up on the hoist, you'll see it. All right, so now using legends, and this is a certification objective as, as well. Um, I should stop it here because I need to label this. Um, this video so that I can uh, I can have it be um, searchable based on just this. And if I throw something else in there, it's just too convoluted. And um, it's uh, it's free for you to view. And it's also f my database so that I can look back and I have to read. This is also, these, these video tutorials that I'm making, is, they're also for me, for a mnemonic for me, if I need a quick reference, because again, how much of this you can absorb and, and, and pull back into your, uh, your, your random access memory and, and then boom, apply it in practice is uh, it's up for debate. Again, you may have to go back and, and utilize this. Now, again, I learned a lot from just searching up um, solutions for all of these exercises. And if you, if you can't find it in the text, uh, there's a plethora of information out there. That's why it's called building information modeling. And I suggest, or at least I recommend, or I hope, that when you do find a solution to a, to a problem or to a, to a task that you worked on, why well, you document it for yourself and share it with some folks, just so that it, you save it for posterity, and then it, you also have a record of it, a documentation. You're documenting it for yourself. Again, just, just a, a suggestion. Now, um, I could just read through this text all by myself, not put it on video, and then have it as a desk reference and not share it. 
but uh, for some odd or enough reason, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, it seems that if you're going to try to absorb something, well, then you know, get it out to a, uh, you know, get it out of your internal hard drive, you know, gray matter, and maybe get it out onto your display, um, the, the front clipping plane, if you will, of your brain. This is a depository of information. It's a good way of doing it. Uh, if you can find a way to monetize uh, these videos, more power to you. More power to you. Uh, there's a certain level of satisfaction you can get uh, if you can find a nice lucrative way of monetizing them on these OTT platforms. Um, and again, there are more platforms other than YouTube to do it on. Um, but again, we're going to get using Legends and we're not going to go for the tangent on SEOs and Google AdSense and Google AdWords just yet. But again, you may find there's a certain satisfaction in that as well. Um, at least you'll get an idea of who's logging. Right? At least you'll get an idea of their IP address and who's actually taking a peek. Anyway. I hope it's not falling on deaf ears. Remember me fondly after I'm dead. <laughs>